and welcome back to my let's play of Aurora 4X. Um, we are currently in the process of exploring our neighboring systems. Uh, we found two systems which are pretty much empty and worthless, and we found two systems which are chock a block full of minerals and some very nice planets. So we currently have our exploration ships uh, checking out for jump points in those systems, and uh, we will soon start with work on colonizing them. In the meantime, uh, as we have run into a stable wormhole, um, I am currently finalizing tech, tech for some simple uh, battle, combat ships. And once the technology has finished, we will be proceeding with that design and construction. So we're moving along nicely. There we go. Alright, Adelaide has been fully explored. And it's got a bunch of jump points, which is nice. Antonio Habeti. Yes, okay, so we will we'll send. Okay, so Antonio still ha has used less than a year of its uh, the time frame. And still got 88% fuel, so what we're going to do is we're sw going to swing it back by Earth for a quick top-up, and we're going to send it out our last unexplored jump point. And we'll see what's out there. So, off it goes. And, yep, yeah, there we are. Canberra has spotted a contact. Uh, let's have a look. So we're going to initiate communication. We'll get a diplomatic team in a second. What do we know about it? Not very much. It's got a sensor of 512. So in case they're hostile, which they probably will be, We are going to send it back home immediately. And we will... Oh. Hmm. Um, we will go ahead and set up a diplomatic team. So, Lieutenant, 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 Commander, Colonel. Good. Right, and we'll go to the relations map, and we will assign him to start working on establishing communications. So, it's at minus six at the moment, which means there's a good chance it's probably just a proper NPR. Um... We don't know what kind of rating we, we have with them because we haven't established communication. So at the moment, we're going to classify them as a neutral contact. And we're going to run in five minutes jumps and see if we get shot at and doesn't look like we are. Good. That means we should be able to initiate communication and start talking to them. Um, they've obviously come, th that's obviously some kind of exploration ship that's come through the wormhole because we've already explored all these systems here. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to set up a bit of a blockade there and see about fortifying the system. But at the moment, it's looking like Canberra is going to be a bit of a hotspot for us. So, actually, if they're not hostile... If 
they're not hostile, I'll give it to continue doing gravitational survey, because that was probably just a survey ship anyway. And our 1.5 modifier is done, which is excellent. One well, point has moved again, but that's fine. And we will continue onwards. What's capacitor? Capacitor's going to take a very long time, so we might have to cancel that. Okay, let's get rid of that and put those five into getting the laser done. Communication, no progress. Uh, that is a concern. And they have determined that's impossible. So, at this stage, it's looking like there's a very good chance that these guys might be invaders because we're now hostile with them and communication is quickly being be determined it's impossible. Um, their ship also zipped by really, really fast. For well, It did have more powerful engines, but it zipped by really fast. So there's a very, very, very high likelihood that we are going to get into a very early fight. Uh, we got some kind of error. Special orders. Somebody. Okay, we're just going to have to pound through these until something interrupts our order turns. It's just, it's just getting worse. I'm going to stop the recording until I get through these and uh, we'll continue on. Um, big shout out to Steve, the creator of Aurora. Um, he got in contact with him and he uh, gave me what I needed to get uh, the error resolved. So what happened was that the... Uh, the, the one, one of the ships, um, mo most likely one of the, sh the sh one of the ships that we spotted uh, in the camera system was uh, given some kind of order that it couldn't comply with, uh, or was removed, and then um, an order was stuck with no nothing to actually apply to. So what I had to do was go into designer mode and actually nuke the. Uh, ship entirely, just basically scrub it from the game. Um, so that means that that ship is gone. But the good news is that we actually are able to continue playing, which is good, at least for now. Um, so yes, I did confirm that those are definitely invaders um, that have come through the wormhole. If they continue to cause problems, or if they cause problems again, we will have to scrub them from the game entirely. So hopefully we won't have to do that. Um, but, well, we'll just have to see how we go. So, 
where we now very quickly um i was notified that apparently uh patrick black has a much more suitable replacement in i'm not even going to try and pronounce that so we're actually going to get him off the project and we're going to replace him with muck i'm going to call him muck so Muck is going to be doing our logistics stuff. So what do we need? We need the fuel storage. We need the engineering. We need the hangar deck. Orbital hab. Salvage. Tractor beam. Troop transports. And construction brigade. Yes, that will do. Um, while I'm here, I might as well actually have a look through and make sure that our top scientists are already working on what we need. So, sensors and fire control, yes, you're better. Uh, damage, yeah, we got our best guy on that. Yeah, we just swapped him around, and yeah, so we already got all that. So... We're going to have to start, we're definitely going to have to start work on some, sh on some ships ASAP. So we'll wait for ultraviolet laser to complete and for speed rating to complete. And we'll get some composite armor. Um, capacitor recharge rate is going to take a very long time to get done. So we're not going to go with that right now. Let's continue on. We really should actually get Mark Aronson out of there because um, new invaders will spawn, and with the current hostilities, they will come after us, and they are not going to be very pleasant to deal with without any weapons or defenses at all. Um, also going to rewind the clock as well to get her prepped. We also want to bail out before the invaders know exactly where we've come from, too. Because they like to build jump gates, and that'll at least give us a bit of a warning ahead of time. We're also going to want to set up a defensive perimeter on this jump point. Um, we're going to have, we want a couple of defensive ships around the wormhole itself, but uh, because that can move around and it's going to require a, a fleet to maintain, we want a defensive perimeter around the actual jump point itself. Um, but we can do that if we can get that habitation module up and running. We can set up a permanent outpost, which will be nice. Uh, the advantage, of course, is that... Uh, there they are again. In Seoul. Ah, they have come through. What do we have on Earth? We have no protection at all. This is not very good in the slightest. Hopefully they haven't become aggressive against us. Okay, let's design some combat ships, or as much as we can. So... We're going to need some armor. Let's go with four layers right now and deployment time of 12 months. That means um, that we'll have a bit of leeway when it comes to coming and going. Um, what do we have? Okay, so we don't have military engines. We don't have functional sensors. We don't have weapons. We are in a lot of trouble. Scrap all that. Don't need any of that. Really didn't want to run into invaders this soon. We may have to scrub them entirely, otherwise we're quickly going to uh, 
one into major problems. Hopefully this guy is just a scout and doesn't actually have any combat capability. Okay, fire control speed rating is done. Let's get that armor done. Okay. Beam fire control. What kind of range do we have? Not very much. Uh, four times we have 100,000 kilometers. Uh, 200,000 is not really going to be sufficient, so we are going to need a range boost as well. This is, yeah, this is a t absolutely terrible situation we're in. So what I'll be doing is, as soon as we get the basic technology we need, I'm going to be whipping out um, a simple laser gunboat. Just maybe one or two lasers, um, maybe three or, three or four lasers tops. Just something to give a bit, of a bit of a punch, make it nice and fast, as fast as possible. So its job is basically going to be to come in and intercept uh, anything that tries to get into our system. So... Um, I believe we can actually do the engines right now, because we're not working on those. So let's get those engines. So I want 500, we got 0.6. Ion is not that great, but with a 1.5 modifier, we can get it up to 882 engine power, which is reasonable. Sorry, 900 engine power, which is reasonable. And our fuel consumption is within acceptable limits of um, a fast gunboat. So that, re that research cost is absolutely atrocious. If we drop it down to 25, we can cut the cost almost in half, but a fuel consumption goes up substantially. No, we're going to have to go for the 900. We'll create that. That will have to fall by the wayside, and we will get ourselves the ion drive. Okay, so that's engine, right? So well, let, let's talk design for a sec. We'll, we'll run through design this episode, I guess. So with active sensors, okay, here, here's the equation for sensor range, sensor range right? And the, uh, a smaller ship is harder to detect. So if your ship is smaller than the resolution, the target is smaller than the resolution, um, then it can get closer and closer before it actually gets close to you. So you can see that um, a 5,000 ton object, which is 100 um, hull size, can be spotted at 5 million kilometers away, while a 1,000 ton object can be spotted at 200,000, and a 250 ton, which is half a fighter, can be spotted at 12,000 kilometers. So, what we want is we need a ship, we need a, something that can spot actual combat ships, and we'll get it at 25 million kilometers. What's that? 25 is that, so that's pathetic. We want at least 200. So we make it bigger until we get it up to 200. There we go, 200 million. So that's a size 40 sensor. That's a pretty heavy sensor, right? So what we can do is we can easily expect um, hostile warships to be around the 6,000 to 7,000 ton mark. So we can actually set it to 6,500, and then we can reduce the sensor size to 35. Well, that's because we're working with basic sensor technology, which is, again, atrocious. I really have not very, not prepared for, uh, 
invaders this soon. But we do what we need to. I think for Earth Defense, we might build a PDC for this. So ramp it up to 50. That'll get us 285. And if we stick it on Earth, that's not enough. It's not enough to guarantee protection. However, Hebe is. If we drop the PDC on, on top of Heeb, then we will easily have a small sensor outpost that can lock on with actives, that can spot actives. So we can actually reduce this back down some more. Get it back down to 200 million. That will be able to spot ships to there. It's not bad. Oh, no, no, it's terrible. But it's not bad for what we have. So we'll create that. <sighs> no, this is just terrible. We're going to have to go, we're going to have to get some better census technology. After being fire control, we'll get some better active sensor technology because we really do need it. We're not going to be able to get effective combat ships in that amount in something that quick. All right, ultraviolet is done. Let's go have a look at our laser tech. See if that's actually decent. So laser technology is currently at 20 centimeter ultraviolet. All right, 20 centimeter ultraviolet is pretty good laser. It's got 10 damage, which is reasonable. It's got 400,000 kilometer range, which is pretty good for a laser. Um, and we can get up to 16 and 640 for a spinal. spinal. So... What we'll do is we'll get a spinal laser. There we go. And we'll get a non spinal laser. Um, we do need a gas gun. Invaders like a really stupid fast missile, so we're going to need maximum hit modifier. So we'll create that. Um, we're going to need power plants. And what kind of lasers do we have? We had... So... If you have a look, right, you've got power requirement. That's, so that's the total amount of power that the laser requires to actually shoot. Um, it's basically equivalent to damage output. And the damage output is at point-blank range. So that's the amount of damage you'll, you'll deal when you if you hit at point-blank range. With the laser, it drops off as distance increases. So once you get a couple hundred thousand kilometers out, you're not going to be hitting for 16. Um, but you'll be hitting for like around one point of damage at maximum range. Um, so... With the power requirement, that's how much power it takes. This is how fast the laser will actually charge power. So you'll see that it, that it will recharge four power every five seconds, and it will fire once it has 10 power. It can only stockpile 10. So it will go four, eight, 10. And, and then it will fire. So you'll get the rate of fire every 15 seconds. So it'll go four, eight, 10, fire. Four, eight, 10, fire. 4, 8, 10, fire. Fairly straightforward. 
And this one is 16. 4, 8, 12, 16, fire. And so rate of fire is 20 seconds. Um, if you put multiple lasers in a turret, this will multiply, but this will multiply by the amount of, of lasers. So, you, so the fire rate will remain the same if you put lasers in a turret. So how does that work with power plants? Well, your power plant... Um, so if you if your power plant supplies 10 power, your laser will still only draw 4 power every 5 seconds. So there's no point having a power plant that outputs 10 power um, if your laser only draws 4, right? So we need a 4 and a 4. So regardless of what the size is, we still only need 4 power every 5 seconds. Um, and that will depend on your power, power recharge. We'll be trying for 5, but obviously... Um, that's not enough. Uh, power five would have been perfect for the twenty centimeter because we could we could have recharged it in ten. Uh, but for this one, it still would have taken twenty seconds because it would have taken fifteen seconds to get the fifth first fifteen power, and then another five seconds to get the the sixteenth point of power. So power plant. We need four, wasn't it? Yes, four. Power plant will be four. So we've got a 0.9 hull reactor, hit the kill of zero. So that means a single point of damage will, dis will destroy the reactor. Now, if we up it to nine, that gives a hit the kill of one, which is okay. Um, and we'll be able to power two lasers. If we get it up to four, We'll be able to power 4, 8, 12, 16. We'll be able to power four lasers with the one reactor, and we'll have two hit to kill. So that means that um, if if we if it receives one point of damage, it will have only a 50% chance of being destroyed. If it takes two points of damage, then it'll fail anyway. But um, two compared to one is pretty good. On the other hand... 120 research points compared to four, 500. Um, I think we will go for the four because although, it, yeah, it's more, it's, you know, it, it's going to be easy to kill, but hopefully we won't get shot in the first place. And with the ships, the size of our ships, um, we're going to lose anything pretty much as soon as we get shot at anyway. So we will create this four power plant and we're just going to run one power plant per um per laser and uh, so that way if the power plant does get knocked out um we're not we're gonna not gonna lose all power to weapons you know um this isn't even worth it at all hmm. interesting it doesn't have a hull size weird um Okay, so we've got power plants, we've got laser, we have engines. So now we need beam fire control, but we are getting the 3200 range because we really do, really, really do need it. Uh, that's going to take almost two years. Um, where was it? Now I've got... All right, so there's the gas cannon. We'll pump that out first. Now, so the reason we need the gas cannon is because lasers are great for shooting ships, but for missiles, you really do need the multiple shots per gun power of the gas cannons. Um, they're going to just basically really save us, save us if they um, if they decide to launch missiles at us. Probably not too much because you know they are invaders, but better than nothing. All right, and we'll go for the energy weapons. So there's our standard laser. There's our spinal what laser. Um. I need power plant. Where's the power plant? There's the power plant. Who's going to get done first? Who has the highest base bonus? This guy. We'll give the power plant. So he's not optimized, but 
there's no point. With 120 points, anybody can do that easy. So we've got the Gauss Cannon, and we are going to need... I'm going to go for 25,000. Hang on, what kind of tracking speed can we get with our fire control? 16,000, so there's no point getting 25. We want the smaller turrets. So how big is this? 18.8. These are pretty. These are pretty chunky. But what is a what is a gearing tech? 3,000. It would be nice to get a 4,000. But mm. it'll do. Yeah, it'll have to do. All right, turrets are in here. There it is, 1020. That can actually go in here as well. So hopefully that will give us the weapons we are going to need to do well, anything useful. So what we want is we want at least a minimum combat effective combat range of 200,000 kilometers. The main reason for this is because maze, um, lasers will get that range a lot faster than mazons will. And when you're fighting with lasers, lasers do need to punch through armor. Yeah, they'll hit hard and they'll do probably do shock damage, but they still need to punch through armor to make, have full effect. And within that time, if they have a decent amount of mazons, um, then they're potentially going to be able to knock out your power plant, your laser cannons, your engines, whatever. So that is not going to be good. Um, I'm not sure if invaders actually use mazons, but I guess we'll find out. And that should be coming up on half an hour. So um, I'll put a cut in as soon as we get an interrupt. And we shall continue on. There we are tomorrow.